Good day to make electricity at drive for us. Relax on The dry fork station has been synced to the transmission grid. That means electricity is now flowing from the plant for the very first time. Rick, we got to get somebody valve out that drip clock pump. Crews have dedicated a lot of time and energy preparing for major milestones like this one. It's all part of getting the plant ready for commercial operation. Uh, Friday morning, we rolled the turbine for the first time. Um, we had uh, several valve tests we had to run. We had to test the emergency lube oil system. Um, we had to test the emergency trip system. We did all of that over Friday and Saturday. And then towards the end of the day on Saturday, about halfway through, I guess, we uh, started working on the AVR, which is the auto voltage regulator. The auto voltage regulator is what controls the voltage on the generator, which is how the plant actually sinks to the grid. And then we uh, did a dummy synchronization. What we did is we left the disconnects, the line side disconnects open on the generator breaker, and then we first manually synced by closing the generator breaker, but it wasn't connected to the transmission system, so we had no power output. And then once we proved that, then we proved the auto synchronization. Let's roll the turbine. For the actual sink, crews roll the turbine and increase its rotations per minute to 3,600, increasing about 360 RPMs every minute. Then, with the click of a mouse, electricity is released to the transmission grid. Even Mother Nature has given approval for the sink. It's a chilly 32 degree day in May and heavy snow. On a call with CEO Ron Harper and the board, Clyde Bush, based in Electric Vice President of Coal Based Resources, shares news of the milestone. You know, they say a lot of beautiful babies are born in a snowstorm, and that's kind of what happened this morning here. Uh, we uh, were able to tie the unit on initially uh, at about uh, 0900. I believe we generated uh, something a little north of 30 megawatt hours. Of a few days after the first sink, another milestone took place. Go to the feeder, Terry. Feeder's on. Feeder's on. Coal's going in. But uh, there it is. You can see the coal. We were able to successfully burn coal in the furnace for the first time. Up to this point, propane has been the fuel used in the boiler. Propane is our ignition fuel that we use before we go on to uh, coal, our primary fuel. So we would put in, on normal operation, we'd start a fire like we see here on propane. Then we'd work a pulverizer up, start it, and start burning coal in the, with this flame stabilized with the propane. Once coal is introduced in the boiler, the propane is pulled out and the coal is self-sustaining. Crews now begin a rigorous testing schedule and incrementally increase the megawatt load. We go to 25 percent through the night tonight, or a minimum of 12 hours. We'll come offline, do turbine overspeeds, go back online, go back up to 25 percent, stabilize, and then intentionally trip the unit again to do a test to see how quickly the, our uh, st main stop valves and governing valves react to a trip. Crews then put the unit back online and begin to ramp up to 50% load, then 75% load, and eventually to 89% load. And all that time we'll be testing. The plant will not reach 100% load until all the different systems have been tested for maximum efficiency. At Dry Fork Station, with producer Jared Barnhart, I'm Andrea Blowers.